The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves you, he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. When you examine that word in the Hebrew, in the Greek, in the Latin, it means loud, boisterous singing, our God singing over us. It's similar to the same cry in a way that Jesus had over Jerusalem, that cry that shaked his body, that had violent convulsions. But here he sings with great singing every fiber of his being over his children. This verse is filled with truth, encouragement, comfort, and promises. The mighty warrior will save. He will take great delight in you. He will no longer rebuke you and will rejoice over you with singing. Yes, our Lord rejoices over all that believe in him and he takes joyful delight in those who trust in his word and abide in his love. But what was going on that our great God would sing? Josiah was the king of Judah, and he had begun his reign, and his reign lasted 80 years. But during those 80 years, the kingdom of Judah had sunk deeper and deeper into sin and in a rebellion against God's law. In the 18th year of Judah's reign, a priest found a temple copy of the book of law that had been ignored for decades. And when he read it to the king, Josiah was broken. He humbled himself, he tore his clothes, and he wept. He did not cry, he wept. Over the next 13 years, Josiah led an amazing transformation and reformation in Judah based on the law of God. He renewed the covenant between God and his people and he destroyed all the idols of Baal and disposed of the idolatrous, idolatrous, idolatrous <laughs> a priest, sorry about that. He got rid of every aspect that did not point to God. We've talked about God being the first creator, but he's not only just our creator, he is our savior and hopefully our Lord. We talked about lament, deep lament, lament that goes throughout our body and the grief that is displayed. We talk about suffering, beauty in the midst of suffering. We talked about endurance and hoping and waiting for God. Today we're gonna to talk about joy. Really? You didn't start off that way. Yeah, we are. Because you can't have real joy without going through the passage and the journey of deep despair. I think that's why I love gospel singing so much. There is no other music on the face of the earth that goes from deepest despair to unspeakable joy between a beat, a measure, or a refrain. It is a constant dance between total despair and unspeakable joy. And we talked about why. We know where gospel music comes from. We know where it started in oppression on the plantations of this country. And out of that darkness came this beautiful music that teaches us musical journey from deepest despair to unspeakable joy. Whether it's the squaw, if you don't know what a squaw is, look up some YouTube videos, particularly of Levante, Gavin. In between notes. What are in between notes? They're notes that are not found on the piano. It's not sharp or flat. It's my biggest argument with those who are deeply, densely, entrenched in European classical music. No boo-boo, sorry. 
It's not sharp or flat. It's perfect pitch. It's in between notes. And so that kind of moaning, that kind of weeping, that kind of stretching the note, that kind of using your vibrato in creative ways, that way of using creative articulation to illustrate the deepest despair to unspeakable joy. I am so grateful for gospel music. And I'm just grateful that my parents exposed me to all, that I can sit with beauty and weep at classical music, that I can play bassoon and flute and play classical music, but then I can sing some gospel music and sing the blues, and then of course, the best, jazz. I'm grateful. Expand your musical territory. You don't have to play it, but know it. It's all part of God's diverse artistry. Have respect for it. If you don't understand it, I am equally defensive of European classical music when people say, you can't improvise. Really? Really? Well, boo-boo. Bach got thrown out of the church for improvisation. Hello? And when you say that this doesn't have these techniques or this doesn't, it shows profound disregard for God's artistry. And it, sound, it shows profound disrespect for the people who created it. And every genre of music came at being created with great sacrifice. You don't have to like it. You do have to respect it. So Psalms 22 tells us this. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart was turned to wax, and it melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a pot shared, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. Faith endures, and prayerfully our grief will not destroy our faith in God. Rather, our faith is incorporated in our grief. That grief gives voice to that incorporation of God. Sally was an enslaved African on plantation. Emancipation Proclamation came. All the enslaved Africans were thrilled. Finally, they were free. That's a debate for another day, whether it was, they were actually free or not. But they were, we'll put it this way, free. They thought they were. They thought the 400 years that they lived, breathed, and prayed, and moaned that they would be free. History tells us that that was not necessarily true in all and every way. But Sally's sitting there. She's the matriarch African slave. And everyone's jumping and dancing and happy. Deliverance. Mind you of the Israelites, right? And they say, Sally, will you dance? She says, not yet. Keep on dancing. Sally, you got to dance. You're the matriarch. Everyone's looking at the children. They need the matriarch to dance. She says, not yet. Finally, they come very strong and say, Sally, you got to get up and dance, sweetie. You got to dance. And she said, I'll dance, but not yet. Where's my mother? Where's my father? Where's my children? Where's my sister and brother? Where's my husband? I'll dance, but not yet. Before Sally experienced that joy physically in her spirit, she took a moment to grieve all that was lost. And then when she did get up and dance, my Lord, my God, 88 years old, danced like she was 10 years old. But she took the time to remember those that didn't reach this moment. And that informed her joy in a deeper way. The great philosopher, Nicholas Wolserstoff, says this. May we eventually discover that a faith that incorporates grief is a stronger and richer than a faith that sings only praise songs. In the Bible, it says that God collects our tears, that he sees our tears, and he collects them during ancient times. When someone would go visit someone who was in their community, who was suffering, who was grieved, they would first start by the, stop by the market and buy a bottle. And they would sit with them and cry with them. 
and they would take the bottle and they would collect their friend's tears and they would go back to their tent, whether cooking or sewing or doing whatever. Every time they looked at their bottle of their friend's tears, they would stop and weep and cry with them. Oh, Angie, she's grieving. God sees all of our tears and he collects them. We talked about the Garden of the Blues of Gethsemane. We talked about how God sent Jesus a comforter, but he did not remove the burden of the cross. But what does the cross represent? A mixture of beauty, of ugliness, of violence, of truth, of abandonment, of fellowship, of suffering, of pain, of endurance, of hatred, of love, of darkness and light. The blues teach us that if we embrace this life, we will have to endure what this life can bring. Jesus continued that journey from the garden of his blues of Gethsemane to the cross. I said it before, my loves, you cannot have the joy. You can have the happiness, but you cannot have the joy of Resurrection Sunday without the darkness of Good Friday. The blues sung mournfully in the garden teach us that through the horror of your darkest night, in the midst of the shadows of darkness, of even death, there is light ever present. To be a servant of the Most High King, we must be willing to obey, relinquish, and to love. The path of pain and suffering is the part of the pathway to deliverance and ultimately our eternal home. God will deliver us. And yes, deliverance may take a while. The creator, the redeemer, the first and greatest artist, the first and greatest musician, our Lord, our Savior, our Jesus calls you by name. We will pass through the waters. They will not sweep over us. We will walk through the fire. We will not be burned. In the end, we will not be consumed, but delivered to eternal joy with our Savior, deliver, healer, and Lord. No more waters of pains, my loves. No more rivers of suffering. No more fires of grief. No more flames of loss. If you are indeed willing, and it surely appears, it sure appears that you are, willing to take up the cross of Jesus and by God's grace and mercy endure all that this life brings, we will truly be free one day in a way that Sally never experienced on this earth but experienced in eternity. Bessie Smith, one of the greatest blues singers, along with Ma Rainey, said this, the greatest blues singer never stops singing. What did she mean by that? There's always blues in this world. Even if it's not ours, we turn on the news, the collapse of the condo in Florida, all sorts of things, a new virus, strain of COVID, Will the student loans be forgiven? I'm sure someone's like, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> well, you might not be there yet. You're co are you college? One or two are college, right? All right. All these, this news. So there's always something to sing the blues about. The man of sorrows, the first and greatest musician, the greatest blues singer, and the one who the prophet Zephaniah tells us we went through the most terrible suffering in the world has ever known and sings over us with joy. Jesus, the ultimate blues singer, never stopped singing over, not with suffering, not with lament, but with the sacrificial gift of love that he gave. He sings with us with joy. Can you imagine God singing over in his voice, loud, proclaiming his love for us. And those echoes in our mind, we're not worthy, 
We shouldn't do this. Did you see what I just did, Jesus? But he sings with us with robust joy, beauty redeemed. Happiness is based on circumstances. It's dependent whether Sean will give me the last donut or not. Joy is regardless whether, and he clearly is struggling, which is very bluesy to me. Um, <laughs> but joy is whether or not Sean gives me the donut or not. Joy is not based on circumstances. Our Savior will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He goes before us and he walks alongside of us. If you have a chance, I read Fox Book of Martyrs every year. And I remember one of my students said, that is so depressing. I said, have you read it? And I copied one of a saint being burned at the stake, singing praises to Jesus as the joy. What is this, what will it cost for you to show joy and light to the world in the midst of darkness. That's what this world needs to see. God's light, God's beauty, and God's joy. Not happiness, not fakeness, but joy in the midst of whatever surrounds you. Joy, unspeakable joy. So like gospel music, you can start out with a drone and start off sad, and then it takes you right to unspeakable joy. Joy that this world doesn't understand. There's a gospel song that says, this joy that I have, the world did not give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Be honest and reel in your blues, but make that journey from singing the blues, moaning the blues, to joy, from darkness to light, from ashes to beauty, from singing the blues to singing with pure joy, regardless of your circumstances. And then you can sing that old, great African-American spiritual, glory, glory, Hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. I got a text at midnight that my girlfriend's parents went to visit her sister in California and they both got COVID. And the father's quite elderly and they thought he wouldn't survive and he's doing well. The mother, healthy as can be is in ICU and she's flying out hoping to reach there before she leaves and when we prayed she was crying and I prayed for her and I texted her I said you do know that healing is on the way and she goes yes we're praying for it I pray so but Ruth we got to be honest that it's there's nothing more they can really do and I said oh my dear one healing is on the way it might not be on this side but it might be on the other side. Either way, healing is on the way. And she said, I will rejoice in that. Go. Heavy burdened, saddened, happy, weary, encouraged, discouraged, go with joy, real joy. That joy that takes you from that path deepest despair, to unspeakable day. What a day of rejoicing that will be. No more tears, no more grief. We can sing in praise and worship to the one who sings over us loudly, beautifully, and joyfully. Create my loves, create with joy, create with light, create with beauty. We have been redeemed by the love of the Lord. God bless you.